So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to everybody wherever you are in the world. Welcome to a Mystery Presenter Friday version of Harmonize to Energize, which those of you that have been supporting, by the way, thank you very much. And for all your um, contributions, your love offerings, it's very much appreciated. Um, you all know that this is where someone from our international community joins us presents um, their stories um, and or self-help practices that we can all use to harmonize and energize themselves. My name is Terry Matthews. I've been practicing Jin Jitsu since 1989. And it's my pleasure to share what I can and what I know when I remember what I know um, about Jin Shin Jitsu and share it with you all in this community. And I love to welcome anybody who's wanting to share their personal stories. For anyone who's uh, new, Jin Shin Jitsu is an art of harmonizing life energy as it moves congruently or not, as the case may be, through our bodies. Uh, this energy is sometimes called Chi um, or Ki or prana, depending on what culture you come from. And it moves in like positive, not like, positive spirals through what we call um, organ function energy channels in the body. And these channels are monitored by what we call in Jin Shin Jitsu safety energy locks. They're like locks in the canal. They allow um, the movement of energy to go through the channel or the canal more congruently, or they reduce the amount of energy that can go through so that everything keeps in harmony. And these energy locks, 26 of them, three in either arm, 26 either side of the spine, they are the size or width of your individual palm. And you place your palms on these energy locks, palms down, fingertips down, back of hands or thumbs. Jin Shin Jitsu was brought to the West by a Japanese American by the name of Mary Eno Burmeister. And she learned from her master, Sensei Jiro Marai in Japan during the forties, um, returning to America, Burbank, California, I believe shortly after the second world war and she married a uh, German American, Gil Burmeister, and they lived and he worked with her out in California. And she brought out the art of Jin Jitsu very gradually and began teaching, or well, one could say um, by accident, but there's a story behind that. But anyway, it was the trigger that allowed her to express her wisdom and knowledge of the art of Jin Shin Jitsu. And my gosh, did she have wisdom. And it's been written in um, textbooks, self-help books. I've mentioned the self-help books in the chat room there. I must say, um, of all the different modalities I've studied, um, the most comprehensive information on self-help um, in energy work that I've ever read has been Mary Burmeister's self-help book one, two, and three. So if you're a bit of a DIY person, which some of us are, maybe most of us um, here, they are wonderful primers. You can also pick up other books, variations um, <clears throat> that were written over the years with Mary's Blessing and uh, Alice Burmeister and Tom Monte's book. And... <clears throat> I'm just going to see if I've got it right in front or near enough. Um, this one, The Touch of Healing. And Walter Riga Krause, who's one of the um, instructors for Jin Shin Jitsu, Health in, is in Your Hands, Flashcards, and a little book. And there's many other books you can uh, find and you can look them up. Some of them are on Amazon, but most of them can be purchased from David Burmeister. And his information is again in the chat room. Yes, you should be sorry, Yona, being late on our mystery presenter day. Anyway, without further ado, it's always a great pleasure for me 
uh, when I get to share because I get to shout out and uh, I get somebody else to reflect and radiate their story of Jin Shin Jitsu. And without further ado, um, <clears throat> I'm hoping that person is with us. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm here. Put your camera on. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> now you disappear. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, well, this is. Uh... Oh, there you go. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Yes, yeah, at last. <laughs> Drum roll, please. Yeah. And most <laughs> experienced Zoom presenter, the one and only from Florida. There's no hurricanes out at the moment, is it? From horror <laughs> from Florida, the one and only, there's only one. Beth Lendrum. Welcome, Beth. Welcome. It's always a pleasure when Beth joins us. And without further ado. I am actually going to get the heck out of Dodge. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, huh, Terry? You're just in and out. Uh, well, yeah, well, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'd love to be with you, but, you know, it's your presentation. And anyway, I like that blue cloth and I want to see more of it. Here we go. You're on. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. It's always an honor to be here to join all of you. And thank you, Terry, also for that beautiful introduction of Jin Shin Jitsu. And so let's all take this moment uh, to just, I just want to start out since Terry gave us the introduction. Let's just breathe together. And let's begin with a collective exhale. Exhale and inhale together. Now there is unity in community. And when we come together in these sacred spaces like Terry has created, it is so powerful and to breathe together is so powerful. So let's continue with that exhale. And inhale. Exhaling, letting go, releasing. Creating space to inhale and receive. Continuing to follow your breath. Allowing the breath to breathe you.
And then on your final exhale of this moment, feel free to begin to open your eyes if you close them during that time. I can feel the presence of all of your breath. You know, we are breathing one breath with the world, one universal breath that brings us all together to this universal love and life. And in that universal breath, I also bring in all of the plants and the animals. And I titled today's uh, conversation, Your Animal Knows. And in my 20 years of studying and practicing and educating Jinshin Jitsu, I've had the opportunity to really observe how our animals give us Jinshin Jitsu and how our animals bring so much wisdom to us if we are able to listen and able to pay attention. And I remember when I was 11 or 10, 11, 12, I was young and I had the flu and I was pretty sick. It was the kind of thing where I never could get out of bed. And, but I was young. And I remember my cat, he was a Siamese cat, Mighty Mouse. My mom called him Mighty Mouse because he used to grab behind the curtains and take a flying leap. And Mighty Mouse was a big cartoon character at that time. But I remember when I was laying in bed sick that Mighty stayed with me the entire time that I was sick. And at the time, I didn't understand it, but I fully, I was aware, I appreciated, and I made note of the fact that my cat stayed with me the whole time I was sick. I wonder if any of you have ever had an experience like that, where your animal companion or animal friend has stayed with you in a time of need and been with you in a time of need. And so I'm sure there were many other memories of animals staying, uh, staying with me and being with me. But one other that comes to mind is I had just started studying Jin Shin Jitsu and I was um, fortunately um, immediately in a trinity where we got together once a week, every Wednesday, it was our flow day and we left glowing. We even had friends that would acknowledge, you know, each of us individually, we would be somewhere after our time together and they would say, you are just glowing. And that was such an amazing time for me in my studies of Jin Shin Jitsu because I was so eager to learn more and to get together and receive once a week and then give once a week was so fantastic for learning more. But I was at one of my friend's houses and her cat, I think her cat's name was Oreo, when I was on the table, climbed up on the table and got on top of me and literally spread from here all the way down to the middle of my thighs. Her whole, him or her, I'm not, I don't even remember, whole body was on me while at the time while I was receiving the session. And I thought it was so fantastic and so amazing. And then interestingly, two weeks later, I had an episode where I found out I had the label of uterine fibroids. It is no surprise to me that that cat knew. And that cat was helping me in my process um, and really was um, also letting me know that there was something going on. I just didn't know. I just didn't know enough at the time to really to pay attention to that.
So while I'm loading my presentation here, my share, your animal knows. And the next slide here, this is me. I was um, in Japan. I studied with Kato Sensei, who was the last living master of Jinshin Jitsu. It was a magnificent time. And this here I am dressed in a kimono. Uh, when after, after the class, I stayed on for a few days. And we, uh, one of my friends and I, she was actually one of my friends in the original Trinity that I studied with and practiced with. Um, we went off to Kyoto in search of everything that every to learn everything we could about Japan and embrace embrace ourselves into the culture. And we found a kimono place that dressed us up. We were there for three hours, and they dressed us up. And that was an amazing experience to be in the presence of Kato Sensei. You know, such very small man with very powerful hands and a powerful presence for sure. And then I'd like to introduce you to Cisco. Cisco, my miniature poodle, who was my most difficult child and my greatest teacher. And Cisco didn't love receiving Jin Jin Jitsu all the time, although he would, but he sure loved showing Jin Jin Jitsu to others. He was sassy. He was a stealer. He was a shredder. Nothing was safe around Cisco. To this day, to be honest, I will still put sneakers up on top of a table or on a counter because if we didn't do that, they, he would chew them and they would be gone. So, um, but he was always sending me messages and I wasn't always listening. So he always perched himself on the couch like this when I was in the kitchen preparing, most of the time preparing dinner. I was a busy mom with two active kids and my husband worked really long hours. And I always felt like Cisco was trying to tell me to slow down. And I realize it more now than I did at the time. But that was his perch while I was, while I was working, uh, while I was working in the kitchen. And so Cisco would sometimes not sometimes, a lot of the times, so let's trying to stop the share. Remember I said he was a shredder. So I was looking through my cards, the deck of cards that Terry was showing us. Might be hard to see, but Cisco got his teeth on this card and shredded it. He had a reach like no other. He may have been little, but he was mighty. And so, when I had children as clients, Cisco became a part of the session. With my own children, Cisco would be sitting next to them and, and all of a sudden he would put his paws on them. So he may be sitting on the right-hand side and he'd have one paw clear cross over to the other side of their body. There was no way that dog was comfortable. And my kids, they, but they were really young at the time, they would say, mom, look, Cisco is giving me a flow. And I wish I had pictures of those times. I do have some other pictures that I'll show later, but I don't have the real young shots. And so he became a part of my sessions initially with children because they were small enough on the massage table that he could jump up the table and it became part of it. We would invite him up to join and he would circle the child on the table and we would all wait for where Cisco would rest. And it was, it never failed every time Cisco landed right on the spot that they needed some help, that needed some support, that place on that child's body that needed, that needed help. 
and the kids loved it because they were engaged. As their 15s, for those of you who don't know about safety energy lock number 15, that's in the groin area right here. As their 15s started to open, they would start to laugh on the table. Safety energy lock number 15 is all about joy and laughter. How can you bring more joy and more laughter into your life? And then they would start creating stories about Cisco. And one, one um, young boy had a dog named Tripod. So he would tell stories of adventures of Cisco and Tripod while he was on the table. And so I go into this because I feel that our relationship and the relationship of our animals is so important. The respect that we give to them, what they bring to us to show us. And with that, what I'd like to do is hold, spend some time here holding safety energy lock number three. So that's at the, um, I can get my hands here. Take your left hand and come across to the top of your right shoulder blade. Oftentimes we'll, we'll lay our hands here over the whole thing, but today I want you to, because we'll get safety energy lock number 11 and three, I want you to really feel around for that tip of your shoulder blade where safety energy lock lives. See if you can find a tender spot or, or a tension, which will feel like a knot there. And the number three is all about relationship. And let's just take a breath here. A couple of breaths. All about your respiration. So you may feel your lungs opening, your breath getting easier. And it's the door. When we're in flow and everything in life is flowing beautifully, that door stays open. But that door of safety energy lock number three knows when to close when it needs to. There's some kind of outside illness that's going around. Safety energy lock three will close to protect you. So it's a great safety energy lock to hold if you need some immune system support. And going back to three being all about your relationship. It's about your relationship with others, your relationship to yourself, and your relationship to spirit, that higher power, God, universal love, whatever you want to call that higher power. And that knowing and that's where our animal friends come in. They just know. And on your next exhale, let's have you switch hands. So taking your right hand and crossing it over to your left safety energy lock number three. See if you can feel around, finding the tender spot, tender, tender spot. And using your breath, 
and the connection of your hands, your jumper cables to facilitate healing and transformation from the outside in and the inside out. And if you like, you can continue to hold safety energy lock number three. I'm just going to show you a slide on safety energy lock number three, relationship, the trinity of your relationships, how you relate to others in your life, your relationship to yourself and your relationship to spirit, universe, God, that higher power, and also your respiratory specialist. And so here we have Cisco waiting outside my daughter's door. It was a routine and a ritual that we had every morning. He would, he slept downstairs and, and then my husband would take him out for a walk and then he'd run up. That was when he was invited into the bed to sleep with me. He would sleep with me for a little while and then he would go and wait outside our daughter's door. This was the first week that she was away at college. And he, when I took that picture, when he was waiting for her and she wasn't going to come out that day. So I had to do some, I had to take him for a really long walk to honor him. And then this is Humphrey. You'll see another photo of Humphrey and my son. Here they are resting and look at the placement of Humphrey's paw. What kind of project do you think my son might have? A shoulder project? He sure does. And I'm gonna stop the share and have us do a little bit more self-help. I'd like to have everybody take your hands, your jumper cables, and just rest them on the back of your head. Safety energy lock number four. The window. I once took a class with a gentleman who was a hair stylist and he just looked up and said, I'm a window washer. So you want to keep your windows clean so that you can see clearly. Safety energy lock number four is your bridge, the bridge from the spiritual world to the human world. From the spirit to the physical. And if it's uncomfortable for you to hold both hands here, feel free to just hold one at a time. This is your self-care practice as well. And if for some reason it's hard for you to hold all, hold at all in this place, feel free to hold your ring finger. Your ring finger has a relationship to safety energy lock number four. And 
And now I'm just going to let us breathe. Safety energy lock number four supports your eyes, supports your brain, you know, the proximity of where it is located. It's also the weaving princess. It crisscrosses through your body. Measuring intelligence, how we see the unseen as well as the seen. And as you're holding these specific places on your body, if you tune in, see if you feel a pulse. Is there a pulse under your fingertips? There doesn't have to be, but oftentimes many people will feel a pulse. Sometimes the pulse will be stronger under one hand and then they'll meet and come into harmony. And if you continue holding when the pulses come into harmony, that's when the magic happens. That's when you really connect to the universal breath and pulse of the world. When you're ready, feel free to release your hands. The safety energy lock number four bridges spirit into matter, the formless into form. It's our window, the weaving princess. And it brings the invisible to the visible. And that's where I believe our animals come in their intuition, they serve as a bridge because they are more connect, can, they don't have the layers that we have to connect to our intuition, to be with the intuition and to trust that, that feeling, that knowing. I don't know about you, but the more I trust that knowing, the more amazing life gets.
And so here's Cisco joining my husband on the table. And look at that beautiful placement. This picture was taken about probably, I don't know, five or six years ago. Um, and such, such great placement right there of where he is supporting my husband. And then just a couple weeks ago, our son's dog was visiting us. This is Humphrey. And Humphrey's a big guy and he doesn't usually get on the table like this. When he found his way onto the table, there was no stopping him. He's heavy, like he's that dead solid weight. And look at where he is. Giving support and also certainly when I found the other picture with Cisco, I thought, I know where we have our work. And that's in me giving my husband sessions. And my husband is a professional receiver. He would receive sessions all the time. And also, I will remind him of some of the self-help that he needs to do to continue in his to continue in his healthy, healthy lifestyle, if you will. And so there were a couple of other stories that I wanted to share from clients when Cisco, when Cisco joined us. Yes, you're right, Diana. Humphrey does take over. <laughs> I didn't have to do anything after that. I had Humphrey. Um, I had one client who literally Cisco was licking her legs, both legs, the entire session. Now I had to, of course, I don't, I don't like to be licked by dogs. So I had to make sure that she was okay with it. She loved it. She had just come from, she had just had surgery and she felt that Cisco was licking away all the anesthesia, the rest of the anesthesia that hadn't worked its way out of her system. And then I had another client, Stuart. He was a, he's a really big client and he had a shoulder project. He didn't necessarily love dogs. And he had grown to sort of love Cisco. And so he had a shoulder project and I was working down at his feet. I'd probably just given him a five, six, seven, eight flow. As you know, in Jin Shin Jitsu, we say as above, so below. So when there's a project up below, above, you might go down below. And I could hear Cisco running down the hall. He was making a running jump. I was not going to be able to to stop him, I said to I said to my client, who I knew fairly well, I knew really well, so I could say, I hear Cisco and he's coming and he's going to join you on the table. And Cisco went flying on the table and went right up to his neck and sat down right by his shoulder. And that said to me, I was working in the wrong place. I needed to work somewhere up in the shoulder. And don't you know, so I moved up to the shoulder. I gave him um, flows that support the shoulder in, in that way. And we saw progress on his shoulder project. So thank you, Cisco, for that. And then I had another client who came in who had, um, the ba her baby was breech. And she was devastated because she didn't think she was going to be able to have a natural childbirth. And really, she was all a bundle of tears, a bundle of tears when she first came in. After her session, she said, at least I know that if I have to have a C-section, I'll be okay. And then when she came for her second session, she told me, I told my mom, I don't know if it worked, but she really has a cute dog. <laughs> and lo and behold, the baby um, turned and she was able to have a natural childbirth. So the power of Jin Shin Jitsu. And so I believe our animal friends, our animal companions 
really are sending us message. They're here to support us. They're here to love us. Of course, we're here to love them back. It's that unconditional love. But I invite you to really pay attention to the message that your animal companion is giving to you. And I, they help us to be grounded in who we are, reminding us to slow down. Every time Cisco stole something, and I have to tell you, I wrote more notes that the dog shredded the homework than any mom should have to do. And honestly, some, some of my kids' teachers, they were not happy. They did not like that the dog shredded the homework. Look at what it was one of my daughter's art projects. And I said, did you show her the art project? You didn't give it to them. Anyway, so, so that brings me to being grounded in who we are. And safety energy lock number five, regeneration. Our mind specialist, so that you are grounded here on earth, so that you can love and be loved. So you can be that star that you are. And so I'd like to take a moment and hold, have everybody hold their safety energy lock number five. I'm going to show you where it is. It's on the inside of your ankle. I have, I have my right hand holding my left safety energy lock number five. If you're not able to reach safety energy lock number five, you can hold your index finger. And knowing that our breath is the ultimate harmonizer, Let's continue to hold safety energy lock number five. Dropping your shoulders. Honoring yourself for supporting your body with self-care. Thanking your body for everything it does for you every day unconditionally. Remembering not to hold tightly, gently connecting your hands to your safety energy locks. Calling in the divine wisdom of your animal companions or any animal that's around you.
And then on your next exhale, let's switch sides. Just take a moment to even out your body. And then if you're crossing your right leg over your left leg and holding your right thigh with your left hand, that inside of your ankle. Mind specialists. All of these safety energy locks combined with your breath help to relax your mind so that you can be and live in your heart. When you're ready, feel free to release your hands. Roll out your shoulders. And then here's a picture of my husband. Always working, always working. And Cisco letting him know. Maybe a little hard to see, but that Cisco right there up on his lap on top of his computer. So there isn't any way that he can type anything. Basically saying, I don't want you to work anymore. Be with me. Be present and be with me. And then this was a client who had a, had a concussion and came for a session and Cisco just jumped on the table to be with her, to calm her. And after I, um, once I rented an office space, my clients were really disappointed when I didn't have Cisco with me because as one of them said, he was as important in the session as I was. So it was beautiful. Our animal, animal companions are so beautiful and show us so much. And so I'd like to leave you with the words and wisdom of Cisco. Cisco was a, is a published author. He was in, um, there was an animal communicator who published a book and she tapped into Cisco's wisdom. And here's what Cisco says. 
You human beings sure are good at getting stuck in your stuff. Did you know there is an alternative way out of your stuff? When I say stuff, I mean those heavy, deep emotions or painful memories. The alternative way is sometimes easier than traditional because you are healing from the inside outward. I am in a healing family and we as healers support others to heal those wounds inside. You can make the choice to participate in alternative self-care and you will find the magical way of healing things so you can feel much, much better inside and out. Don't get stuck in your stuff. Seek out healing work and let your life change for the better. I'm honored to have spent this time with you today. And I would love to know if any of you have any animal stories that you'd like to share. Any raised hand? Mm -hmm. Has anybody had any experiences where their animal has showed them the way? I see Nancy has raised her hand. Uh, yes, Beth, just recently too, a student of mine uh, comes up from the city with her cat, uh, Spencer, <laughs> and she didn't have time to take him home. So Spencer was in a little cage and we let him out with the consent of everybody. And he stayed pretty quiet till the end of class. And then I go around and I, I clear everybody's uh, floors and neck. And the cat came to each person and put his little paw on the shoulders. <laughs> I mean, it was beautiful. It was just simply beautiful. <laughs> that is really beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh my gosh, to have had a video of that. Could you imagine? Wow. I wish it, it was precious, precious. <laughs> I am going to put my contact information in the chat. Um, if anybody would like to reach out to me, it's bethlendrum.com. So I lead a once a month Jinshin Jitsu mastermind study group where we all get together and support each other in understanding Jinshin Jitsu and in supporting each other in our business. So, and there were a couple of stories in the couple of stories in the chat here. Um, let's see. That's right. They only wanted the flows they wanted and they would let you know when you were treating your animals for, for sure. Yeah. I thought there was one more here. Um, this is Yona who talks about her cat, um, jumped on the table and put a paw on the right for it was amazing. I'm sure it felt amazing too. Well, here's to magical transformation with Jinshin Jitsu and your healing hands. You have the whole world in your hands, everybody. Be sure you be sure you utilize them. Terry, anything you'd like to share? Say. I I just wish I'd had a homework shredder in the day. <laughs> I had too much homework. <laughs> I wasn't the best student, so I had to have a lot of homework. <laughs> Cisco, um, I'm curious, wasn't there a Cisco kid? I know there was a Waco kid in Blazing Saddles. Now, where's the Cisco kid from? Where's that from? I'm not sure. People would always joke about Cisco kids. So truth, yeah, yeah. truth be told, Cisco is named after a beach on Nantucket. Oh, and maybe a brewery on Nantucket too. We go into Cisco Beach first and then the brewery and then the lightning bolts came. That's what we're going to name our dog. Oh. Because wow. we were picking him up after our vacation on our way home. We were picking him up. Wow. Well, you know, that connection with animals is just 
a beautiful way in my experience I, I personally don't have animals because I'm a bit of a wuss and I you know I'm a little concerned that they might bark I always seem to attract beep, 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 uh, <laughs> dogs and, and that might you know um, scare people off but I do know having done some of the animal classes and working on other people's animals and I'm sure a lot of you do here that it is such a beautiful connection and that wisdom in, in that um, communication at the end, oh my gosh. So that was an animal um, communicator, yeah? She was an animal communicator and she put a book together um, and interviewed all different types of animals, interviewed, you know, connected with them. <laughs> tapped, in, tapped into their intuition. Yeah. Is Cisco still with us or did he move on? Cisco has moved on. Um, yeah. Well, heaven's a happier place or where the dogs go. I, I heard, I don't know if it's true, I heard that animals actually, um, doggies and whatever, don't necessarily stay um, too long in the other dimensions, maybe because we need them. <laughs> so, they, <laughs> so they come back down quickly, who knows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't know what everybody else is experiencing right now. I'm um, coming back to Beth and her inspiration and, and the quality of energy that she brings to the community. She mentioned unity. I, the space you created there, um, Beth, was beautiful. So I am really, really um, grateful to you for coming on. And, and you know, um, I, I'm part of um, Beth's study group on Mondays. And I tell you, if, if you're wondering about um, connecting with other Jinshin students and exploring um, aspects of Jinshin Jitsu, Beth, mainly you want people that have done text one and text two, or do you mind? There are some people that have not. Um... Uh, usually we have a conversation beforehand to see if we feel like it's a right fit um, because we are going through the textbooks most of the time. So we're towards the end of text two right now. So, yeah. So for those of you that knew text one and text two are the, the labels for the actual practitioner material, self-help books, one, two, three, and four um, happy hands are, more foundational, um, no less powerful, but more foundational, not specific to the practitioner per se. You, you learn about text one and text two when you want to study um, on the five day basic seminars. So um, unless there's anything else coming up, anyone, um, what's going on in the chat room? Anything? Lots of, lots of beautiful comments. Thank you all. Yeah. Now, um, Beth, as um, some of you know, um, often stands in as host for me, but actually next week, someone else is actually staying <laughs> in and, and uh, all change. However, I, I'm really grateful to Beth and anyone and this particular person who's going to stand in um, because from time to time I do get carried away and maybe carried off. So um, <laughs> everyone <laughs> needs a vacation and a break, Terry. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I might appear next week, but um, it's Tai Shebelas coming back next week. And I was saying, oh, why don't you be, be a mystery host? But she spoke to me earlier today and she said, no, 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 no. She's Brazilian. And she said, no, no, no. You, you mentioned I'm coming. So Thais will be here next Friday. Um, I do have a clue of what she's going to talk about, but I'm not telling you. Um, <laughs> <but> she's <laughs> she'll, be, she'll be on next week. And um, so join her and possibly me uh, next Friday, same time. Um, and uh, those people that in, were in New York, I saw Yona mention again, you know, any advice about what's going on in the smoke. I've already mentioned that. Beth, any advice to anyone who's dealing with the smoke beyond wearing the mask? Gin chin stuff? Oh, you mean, was, that a recommend yeah. was that a recommendation for the smoke? Is that what you were saying? Uh, yeah, um, people have asked me. I've given some answers, but I thought, uh, and some said, what does Beth think, more or less? So, uh, well, I think what you gave was, was really beautiful and really perfect. We did safety energy lock number three. Always a good one. Yeah, for that. 
and um, the breath mudra. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, my favorite <laughs> mudra. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, thumb over ring finger, folks. Thumb over ring finger. Nail. Yeah. Um, so, be safe, everyone. Um, these are very, very transitional times. <laughs> so, there's a well, lot going on. <laughs> thank so, you, Terry. Thank you all. Thank you, Beth. It's always a pleasure, and you'll be back on. Uh, I've said in the past, I was thinking of having a, a panel presentation sometime, maybe four of you, and um, I've already decided if Beth's available, she's on it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she's available. Anyway, take care, Beth. Take care, everybody. And um, I'm going to stop the recording before it stops itself. <laughs>